Why do we have to turn off our phones for takeoff and landing? At this time, your portable electronic devices must be set to airplane mode or switched off. Anyone who has ever traveled by plane has heard this phrase before. This seemingly simple command leaves us with the questions, why? And what will happen if I don't? We at Brightside have decided to answer frequent traveler questions regarding gadgets on airplanes. So why do we have to turn off our phones for takeoff and landing? Get ready to find out the answer to this inquiry and many others. Then click the thumbs up, fasten your seatbelt, and let's go. You can even leave your electronic device on at this time. Number 6. What is flight mode for? Flight mode is more than a pretty airplane icon on your smartphone screen. In flight mode, your gadget disables all data services – Wi-Fi, GSM, Bluetooth, etc. Simply put, your phone or tablet stops functioning as a radio receiver. If your smartphone has not been switched to flight mode, then the signals emanating from it may interfere with the highly sensitive electronic equipment on the aircraft. Number 5. What if I just don't use my phone? When a smartphone is just locked and you're not using it, it is still searching for a network. And its frequency may overlap with the frequency of the aircraft systems. Even if you think a sleeping gadget doesn't pose a threat, switch it to flight mode anyway. If your device happens to lack this function, just turn it off. Number 4. Why is my phone activity dangerous? As you know, takeoff and landing are the most difficult and crucial stages of the flight, when pilots need to coordinate their actions with ground control. All this is done using the aircraft's navigation system. Think about it. If your cell phone signal is strong enough to travel long distances, then it can definitely cause interference with an airplane's radio communications and the pilot will not hear information transmitted by the air traffic controller. It can also meddle with the navigation and flight control equipment. All this might lead to an emergency situation, and we don't want that, right? Planes are scary enough even when everything is going smoothly. Imagine if something really goes wrong. Pilots can avoid disaster, but not the panic on board. It's not just your phone sending out strong signals. Laptops, Kindles, iPods, and gaming consoles do it too. If something is wrong with any of your gadgets that causes them to emit even stronger radio waves than they normally do, the threat is even bigger. If there's more than one disobedient passenger on board, the signals from their gadgets combine and obviously get even more intense. Number 3. What will really happen if I leave my phone on? It sounds pretty scary that a cell phone can interfere with an airplane's radio communication and cause a horrible tragedy. But how likely is it in reality? What will happen if I just ignore the instructions and leave my phone on? Well, chances are you'll be kicked off the flight. This exact thing happened to Alec Baldwin who was so into playing his favorite online game on his smartphone that he wouldn't agree to turn it off. As a result, he was kicked off a flight from LA to New York. See? Even the celebs aren't immune to the rules. Maybe he found another way to travel two and a half thousand miles within five hours that didn't require temporarily putting down his beloved Words with Friends game? Probably not. Of course, not every rebellious passenger is caught red-handed and punished. Public Radio International asked people to confess their travel secrets. And it turns out that 4 out of 10 passengers in the US ignore the warnings and leave their gadgets on while soaring through the clouds. Fortunately, no plane crash in history has ever been a result of an active smartphone on board. However, the causes of such tragedies often remain a mystery. In January 2017, NASA published a report on passenger electronic devices. 
Every year, crew members anonymously contribute information to the U.S. Aviation Safety Reporting System. And according to their reports, there were at least 50 cases of electronic devices causing safety problems on board. One of these safety problems was an error in the navigation equipment that caused a 30-degree deviation in an airplane, which might not sound like a lot, but for an airplane, it's a serious problem. The problem was fixed when a passenger on board the plane finally turned off his portable DVD player. But when he switched the player back on, the same issue arose again. There are other similar situations described in the report, none of which sound like any fun at all. Number two, then what electronic devices can I use on a plane? Throughout the flight, you can use any devices that don't exchange data through GSM, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth. For instance, electronic watches, but not smartwatches, cameras, video cameras, voice recorders, hearing aids, pacemakers, etc. Yes, you can even take pictures and videos on your phone given that it's on airplane mode and the airline doesn't have its own policy that forbids it. They'll definitely let you know if that's the case. Devices with this data exchange function may also be used at all stages of the flight, but only on flight mode. These include smartphones and smartwatches, tablets, ebooks, digital audio video players, etc. You can also use a laptop, but if it doesn't have a flight mode option, turning off the Wi Fi works just as well. You may turn off airplane mode only when the aircraft is in flight usually a few minutes after takeoff, and only after a message from the flight crew tells you that you can. But then again, you won't be able to do much with your data when you're thousands of feet from the ground, right? Please remember that these rules can change depending on the airline. It's a good idea to check the official website before your flight. It'll save you some trouble later on. You don't want to be fighting with the cabin crew just so you can read the electronic version of The Great Gatsby, do you? Number one, how am I supposed to occupy myself during the flight? If you can't live without the internet, or at least you think you can't, there's a solution for you kindly provided by many airlines today. In-flight Wi-Fi doesn't use cell towers to bring the world to you. It's satellite-based and therefore safe for the airplane's external communications. It gives you access to your email, social media, and messengers. You can also surf the net to keep up to date on the latest news. You can't text since it's Wi-Fi only, but who really texts these days anyway? One thing you should remember though is that it's not free. Prices vary depending on the airline and the device, but $10 is normally enough to keep yourself on the grid during a flight if you prefer to pay for just one trip. You can also get a 24-hour or even an annual pass. Good news for us! Airlines are now competing to provide the fastest and best in-flight Wi-Fi. Australian airline Qantas, for example, offers its passengers a connection strong enough to stream Netflix on board. And, of course, free Wi-Fi will be waiting for you as you arrive safely to your destination. How to stay safe on one of those public networks is the topic of another one of our videos. Here's the link to it. To sum it all up, while a couple of working phones won't crash a plane, a cabin full of passengers actively using their gadgets will interfere with the safety of the flight. Let's appreciate the work of others and not create unnecessary difficulties for pilots. After all, it only takes a second to put your phone on flight mode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. If you liked this video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button. If it gets 300,000 likes, we'll post more videos answering the most important questions of all travelers. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to be the first to see all our cool updates. Remember to always look on the bright side of life.